Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the reliability of our Smart 4 2. Now, we've had this car 18 months already. I can't quite believe that. And um, it hasn't had the easiest ride. Let's just put it that way. It's had a couple of issues. Um, it was one of the cheapest smart cars in the UK. We managed to buy and insure and tax this car for under £1,500. Um, it's got 40,000 miles on it. It's LPG converted. We bought it, it had no service history. Um, the LPG system didn't work. It was a bit of a project. Um, but it's on the road and it's doing well. So um, let's talk about what it's taken to get it to that point. So I can't believe that we've already had this car 18 months. It's absolutely flown by. It has been um, good fun to drive, but I think the reason that is because it's been off the road nearly as much as it's been on the road. Um, when we first bought it, it drove absolutely brilliantly. Um, it then developed a problem where it wouldn't start. Now, what we found was every time you turned the key, the, um, the, the fuse for the spark plugs would blow, fuse number eight, and the car wouldn't start. It was uh, that simple. Um, so we were obviously some sort of electrical short. Now, this is obviously quite concerning. Um, I didn't want there to be sort of some serious wiring issue. So spent a long time trying to chase that down. I've taken the whole back off the car. We've changed all the spark plugs, coil packs, everything like that to see if that was the issue. Um, we've also redone all of the wiring inside the engine bay and we were still having that issue. I took it to an automotive electrician um, who charged me 150, 150 pounds to tell me that there was a short. So um, we're back to square one, which wasn't very helpful. Now, I put a post on the Smart Car Facebook page, uh, UK Smart Owners, very, very well populated site. And um, I was contacted by a chap called Ben, who it turns out owns um, Smart Technic, uh, one of the best smart specialists in the UK. And he advised me that there's a plug uh, that goes into the gearbox that rubs on the subframe. Sure enough, that's exactly what it was. So my dad and I replaced it actually on this patio here. And um, got the car back up and running and it it ran for probably well it had been off the road for six months at least um and then it ran probably for two months three months um and then stopped again um and the starter motor had given up so our most recent trip um to get it fixed was at um smart technic in birmingham now we've been pushed us in the car for probably five months or so um, it's fairly easy to do on these smarts and you know what these are just such good fun little cars we couldn't not drive it um, we we're also worried that if we didn't drive it and just left it it would have issues brakes would seize on etc so um we had that we just started running it um make sure we park on a hill at home unfortunately we've got one and um got it running that way so um our latest bill, uh, well, to have the starter motor changed was £350 because you have to drop the whole engine out um, to access the starter motor. Nevertheless, we got it done, 350 quid, which I didn't think was too bad. I didn't really want to do it myself, and it's far cheaper than buying a new smart car, so um, we got it sorted. Now, while we were there, we also had a few more little things. Um, we had a full service done. And also we had it remapped, so it's now about 90 horsepower um, from 60, which is a lot of fun in a car that weighs 700 kilos. So um, yeah, it's now back on the road and going, but how much has it cost us to get this thing going in sort of a good working order? Well, really it's, it's got to be over 400 pounds. I mean, of 500 pounds even. We uh, paid 150 pounds for this auto electrician to have a look at it. Um, that was that was a waste of money, to be honest. Uh, we paid a hundred pounds in spark plugs, coil packs, etc., and HT leads. Uh, so that is two fifty. We've then paid three fifty for the um, oh god, it's six hundred pounds for the starter motor. Um, and let's not forget, those are things that have gone wrong. Uh, that's how much it's cost us six hundred pounds. Um, 
I then paid an extra 50 quid to have the service done and then an extra um, 120 for the remap. Um, it failed number two, you had to have a new suspension arm, that was £35, I fisted it myself. So we're looking at around £900 um, so far, which works out, I think it's £50 a month, isn't it? For Is it? Yeah, £50 a month so far on getting the smart going. Now, I think a lot of that could have been avoided if we bought a good one, but uh, you know, it's one of these things. So, um, in terms of actual fuel savings though, driving back from Birmingham, this car averaged 72 miles per gallon. Um, it costs £30 a year to tax, £160 a year for Darcy and I to, or Mr. DL and I to um, fill up, and um, to, to be insured on even. And actually, look at it, it's a lovely little car, um, leather seats and everything. If you were to go out and finance a new smart car, you'd be paying two, three hundred pounds a month. You can only be electric, um, which is only good if you've actually got somewhere to fill it up. It's you less compliant, this thing. So actually, even though we only paid fifteen hundred pounds to start with, we've now spent six hundred pounds on bits that have broken. Um, we've really not done too badly, I don't think. So, um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on the little smart. It's definitely going to be a staple going forward. Um, they're just brilliant, brilliant little things to drive. Good fun. And I think I'm going to do some more content on this when I get the chance because it is, it's ideal. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next video. Cheers.